guys, hope you're having a great day again today. Today I decided to mix up some cinnamon rolls. I have a friend coming over today and I thought it's the end of the month. You know what the end of the month means? You gotta gather up everything to try and make something. And so we've had so many snacks and treats <laughs> this past month with birthdays and 4th of July and friends coming down that I was like, what am I gonna make? So I was thinking yesterday, cause when someone comes over, you wanna serve them something. And I thought, well, I don't wanna run to the store and get anything, I shouldn't have to do that. So I thought, what can I gather up at home that I have that I can use? And so I was thinking I was gonna make some pumpkin muffins, but I realized I don't have chocolate chips, so it kind of make them plain. I thought, could make some pumpkin bread, something like that, but I'm like, hmm, cinnamon rolls. Cinnamon rolls are something we used to make all the time. We had a tailgate market down here that when we first moved, we made cinnamon rolls every Thursday and we would sell them at the tailgate market. And that's how we got to know a lot of people from our community here. So I thought, you know what? I will get up and make a small, small, I won't do a huge Marion batch. I'll do a small batch of cinnamon rolls. So I thought I'd show you how to do it because it's super simple and they taste really good. Well, first you're going to um, activate your yeast. So you're going to add a half a cup of warm water. I just use hot tap water where it's it's turned on the fullest thing and then you're going to add two packages of yeast. I get my yeast in bulk from Sam's Club and so I'm just going to scoop out two tablespoons worth because that's about what a package would be and then you need two tablespoons of sugar and that will help get your yeast going and then it's going to be just whisking this up kind of get it While that's sitting, you're going to mix up, because that's going to get a little fluffy. Then I'm going to mix up a package of, you need a package of vanilla pudding. All I had was birthday cake, so I'm going to use birthday cake without the sprinkles, and then that will work. So you're going to add your, this in here, and it's with two cups of milk. Let that get thick. Now that your, your yeast is kind of bubbly, you're going to add the rest of your stuff. So I'm going to add my pudding. And then you're going to add a half a cup of butter melted. You're going to add two eggs. And then you're going to add a teaspoon of salt. Whisk that up. Then we're going to add six cups of flour. So I'm just going to do two first and then whisk that as much as I can. He says six cups of flour. I added about five and a half on this batch. And so I'm keeping the other half because when I roll it out, 
There might be, as it rises, it might need a little bit more in there. We'll just wait and see. So don't add the full six cups, just do two. Whisk it in with the little whisker and then slowly knead in a cup at a time. And then that way your bread, your dough won't get too hard. So usually you can just let this sit. You can let it sit on your countertop. You can put a little towel over and let it rise. I'm gonna stick mine in my oven because I have a bread proof button on my oven and it'll turn it and make it the perfect temperature because I'm in a hurry today to get this done. So we're gonna do that and then let it rise till it's done and then we're gonna punch it down and we're gonna roll it out. Okay, so now that your bread dough is, you can punch it down. See how nice and squishy that is? That looks really good. And then I'm gonna roll it out on my countertop. Okay, next you're gonna take two tablespoons of melted butter and brush it on your rectangle that you made and then sprinkle a half a cup of brown sugar. Then we're gonna roll it up and we're gonna slice it and put it in our greased cookie sheet. Okay, here's my cinnamon rolls. This is the pan that I'm gonna use to serve our guest with. This is just extra. They'll still taste fine. Another thing that we do is put them in a round cake pan and you can put them like around and, and a couple in the middle or one in the middle, make them bigger, whatever you wanna do. This, I'm gonna turn my oven on bread proof and turn that on. And then that way I'm gonna set in there so it can rise up a little bit and then we're gonna bake them and this is gonna be delicious. Okay, you can see that our rolls are double in size. They're filling the pans nicely. So now I'm gonna turn my oven on 350 and let it bake for 30 minutes. Okay, these came out of the oven and look at how delicious they are, perfection. <laughs> Even the half done ones, or the not so pretty ones are still good. So this will be my, one I'll do is um, when I serve our guests, this will be extra. So they're warm, they're still slightly warm. So I'm gonna start making the frosting. On my blog I have this recipe and it's a half a cup of butter and one cup of brown sugar and you boil it for two minutes. I did half that amount because I'm just gonna do, I always have a lot of frosting, and since it's in two pans like that, this will be plenty. So I'm gonna let this melt, and you're just gonna let this boil for two minutes. Okay, so after that boil for two minutes, then you're gonna add a quarter cup of milk. I'm gonna do about half that because this is not exact, this is half the amount. It? And then you're gonna add one cup of brown, or one cup of powdered sugar. I'm adding one cup of powdered sugar. You're gonna add two cups of powdered sugar, because that's what the recipe is. I'm just doing half. So I'm gonna whisk this, and this is gonna be your caramel frosting. It is so good. I 
And then I'm gonna add a little bit of maple flavoring because I like that. You can add vanilla, anything you want. I'm gonna do maple. Here's my two kinds. This is the caramel frosting, and this is just like powdered sugar with milk frosting. A little more drizzly, this is more gushy, this is a little bit more frosting. I like this one better, it tastes better, but this is good too. So you saw I made two different kinds of frostings real quick. I just cut that recipe that's on my blog, plainandnotsoplain.com, for caramel frosting. Um, I use that on the one that I'm serving as guests because it is a little something different and is yummy. You can also put crushed nuts on top. I just don't know if they have any food allergies, so I'm gonna leave that off. And then the other one, all I did was take the same pan, I put some powdered sugar in there, a little bit of milk and a little bit of the maple flavoring, just whisk it together, and then um, just drizzle on the other batch for the family. So I know we won't eat this whole caramel one, but at least it looks more presentable. So that's an easy way to make some soft cinnamon rolls. They taste delicious, they're great. We use these for tailgate markets. You can make them, um, I got the recipe from like an Amish community and they would make them on, they would take them and do it in the bread, I'm sorry, in the cake pans, the circle ones, and they would do like, you know, four rounds on there, five, and then they would take them up and put them on paper plates and put them in bags and sell them. So that's the way they did it for like, I think it was like $6 a thing and they were so good. So this is just an easy way you can make it at home. You can make a whole big batch real quick. This was just a small batch for our family, but it's big for most people. So I hope you enjoy this and we will see you tomorrow. Okay, bye-bye.